Desecrated and profane, but the sacred fourth commandment is still valid and unchanged. Hear the Father gently call thee if you love me, each one, not for me. Salvation, but because you love my son.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the Cedar Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're very happy that you're here with us this morning to worship the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Thank you so much, Symphony and Singers, for the beautiful prelude. Um, at this time, I would like to invite uh, Pastor Howard. He has a couple of announcements. And as he finds his way here, I do want to mention that we want to thank all of you who came to clean and prune and spread the mulch here on the grounds of the church. Thank you so much. We very much appreciate all your efforts and all the help. Amen. Happy Sabbath. You know, we were sitting in front of this speaker for that musical number, and it was unplugged. And I thought, man, my hearing, I'm getting older, and it's gone faster than I thought. So when we plugged it, anyway, I felt a lot better about that. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I have a couple announcements I want to run by you real quickly. Um, first of all, you saw a lot of inserts in your bulletin today. I want to highlight one that says, Help Wanted. Uh, the conference office has asked me to make clear that they are looking for helpers with cleaning bathrooms during camp meeting this year. They are paying for that. If it's something that you think you'd have time for and you're interested in, just notice this insert and contact Jody Murphy at our conference office. Um, this afternoon, we are going to be from 3 to 6 p.m. taking out little cookie sharing book gift baskets to missing members. And for those of you church members who can help us to deliver those, that would be fantastic. A lot of you have been baking cookies. And if there are those visitors today who say, hey, I have downtime. What am I going to do this afternoon before this evening's program? You can come join us. We'll be right here, meet in our fellowship hall, and we're going to pass out uh, some things to cheer some people up today. Uh, last but not least, I just want to highlight that we do have a church business meeting coming up June 4th. It's in the bulletin. Uh, you'll hear more announcements, but uh, just so that you can put that on your calendar, it'll be 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And now at this time, I want to invite Christy or Moscow up, who's going to share uh, from our Pathfinders Club. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this time of year, we get really busy with programs, but we highly encourage you to come to the Pathfinder Adventure Investiture Program, and we have a promotional video to help you not forget to be there. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, this morning we invite your presence here in a special way. We've gathered in your house on your holy day. We know you will be present, 
you've promised, and your promises are sure. And today, Lord, as we look at singing and your wish to have your people sing, we pray you'll teach us. Amen. will be, um, sorry, our first song this morning will be hymn number 343. Number 516. Just do it all. 
opening hymn is 286. Please stand. Happy Sabbath. For our personal ministries time, I'm going to be sharing an obituary, and you guys will catch on here in a minute. I know all of you were saddened to learn this week of the death of one of our church most valuable members, someone else. Someone's passing created a vacancy that would be difficult to fill. Else has been with us for many years. And for every one of those years, someone did far more than the normal person's share of work. Whenever leadership was mentioned, this wonderful person was looked upon for inspiration as well as results. Whenever there was a job to do, a class to teach, a meeting to attend, glow tracks to pass out, Bible studies to give, going door to door, or passing out cookies to missing members, one name was on everyone's lips, let someone else do it. It was common knowledge that someone else was among the largest givers in the church. Whenever there was a need or a shortfall, everyone just assumed that someone else would make up the difference. Someone else was a wonderful person, sometimes appearing superhuman, but a person can only do so much. Were the truth known, everyone expected too much of someone else. Now someone else is gone. We wonder what we are going to do. Someone else left a wonderful example to follow, but who is going to follow it? Who is going to do the things someone else did? Remember, we can't depend on someone else anymore. I'm sure many and maybe even all of us thought about doing something and we didn't because somebody else would. Well, what if they didn't? So let's all work together to take the load of somebody else's work. I encourage all of you to grab glow tracks, the Story of Hope books, 
We have BibleStudyOffer.com uh, entry packs, and even come out this afternoon from 3 to 6 to help us pass out cookies because someone else isn't around anymore to do all these things, so it's up to us. Have a blessed Sabbath. Well, this is the time that you've been looking forward to. It's the time for the offering. Yes? <laughs> Today, offering is for the world budget. Um, a portion of today's world budget offering goes towards disaster and famine relief, the Adventist Community Services. Almost daily, Adventist Community Services volunteers compassionately respond to disasters throughout the areas served by the North American Division. They serve by collecting and distributing cleaning buckets, personal care kits, clothing, food, and much more through collection centers, warehouses, distributed centers, and mobile distribution units. No matter how large or small the event, individuals are trained and locally deployed to provide physical relief as well as emotional and spiritual care to the survivors of these disasters. As Adventists, we are compelled to do our very best to provide assistance to each survivor. Isaiah 52, 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Our combined offerings and service enable us to act as Christ's hands and feet to fulfill that purpose. Today, your offering will be gratefully received to support Adventist Community Services in the North American Division and the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, known as ADRA, internationally to further their efforts. Thank you for returning God's tithe and supporting today's offering to provide disaster relief. And with that, I would like to offer a word of prayer and ask the ushers to stand. Dear Lord and Father in heaven, we are very thankful that we have an opportunity to come before you and return to you what belongs to you, for we know that all of it belongs to you. We want to be faithful, and also we want to share with our offerings and support this ministry to take care of those who are going through difficult times in their lives as they go through struggles in disaster areas. It is my prayer that each and every one of us can contribute, and with your blessing, Lord, this funds may be for ultimately fulfill your will for our lives. We thank you for this opportunity and pray and ask for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.
At this time, we would like to invite all the children for the children uh, offering. There's going to be baskets in the front and in the back, so we would like to welcome you and have you come over, and you will be blessed with the story. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. So, today I'm going to tell you a story from a long time ago during World War I. And I have a prop here. And can anyone tell me what this is? There you go. All right, good job. So, this is a pigeon. His name is Oliver. This is not obviously about Oliver. Um, but this is just to give you an idea of how big and everything this bird was. This pigeon's name was Cher Ami. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's French. I'm not French. But it means dear friend. Anyways, so there was a battalion of about 500 men that were camped out in this little hill area. And they were surrounded by Germans. 
and they could not get out. It was a trap, and they were not getting out anytime soon alive. So they had pigeons at this time to carry messages back to the base and to get help. So they sent multiple pigeons out with messages on them, but each time every one of those pigeons got shot down till they only had one pigeon left. And her name, his name, sorry, his name was Jeremy. And he was sent out the next day. There was only about 200 men left because the, the Germans were shooting them all. And um, so they sent this pigeon out with a very special message, very simple, but it, it meant whether or not they would get out of there alive. It was basically, we're surrounded, this is our area, please come and get us, help us. So they sent this pigeon out and the Germans saw him fly out of the brush and they started shooting at him. And for a few minutes, there were bullets just whizzing past this poor bird as he's flying out. And he kept going up and up and up and they couldn't imagine how he would get out of there alive. That's a lot of bullets to go through. And um, so eventually he got out of range of the bullets and he flew back to the base, which was 25 miles. And I don't know if you understand how long a mile is, but this bird flew 25 miles in 25 minutes. So anyways, when he gets back to the base, one of the, the soldiers that were there, he went, because the, when, when a pigeon goes back to the base and lands in his cage, a buzzer sounds because they have a message. So the person, the soldier came to check and see what this message was. And this message, obviously they got it, but this bird was laying on his back, covered in blood, and he had a hole in his chest the size of a quarter from a bullet and his, his leg was hanging on by a tendon, but that was the leg that had the message. So he almost lost that message, but he didn't, and he went through it, and he didn't give up, even though obviously he had gone through a lot and was even blinded in one eye. He got through and got the message there. He didn't stop. And so the medics, they took care of him, and they got him to be able to live. Well, he lasted about another year, and then he died from those wounds, complications and everything. I can imagine that would happen, but. Um, anyways, so those people, 200 men, were saved because of this pigeon. And um, I think that's pretty cool. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11 talks about Paul and all of his troubles with being a messenger for Christ. And he was boiled, he was beaten, he was stoned, he was whipped. He had so many problems happen to him, just like this bird, and yet he kept going. He didn't stop. He carried through his mission. And how many of you guys want to be like that? Do you want to be able to carry through your mission even throughout everything? Me too. Does anyone want to pray? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that you would die for us. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back to your seat. Okay, before I pray, we have a special prayer request for Becky and Mike Lamb. Uh, their friend, Chad Roper, isn't doing well and could use prayer. And then their dad is dying of cancer, so he needs prayer too. So just keep them in your prayers this week. Please kneel as far as possible for our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blessing of your Sabbath. I pray today that you will send your Holy Spirit to be with us and help our music to be a blessing to everyone here and most importantly, to lift you up. In your name, amen.
today's scripture reading is going to be found in 2 Chronicles 20, 21, and 22. That's 2 Chronicles 20, 21, and 22. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and praise the Lord, set in bushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Oh John, oh John, now didn't you say? Walk in Jerusalem just like John That you'd be there on that great day Walk in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready To walk in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. King Jesus rides in the middle of the air. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. I pray the Lord will be there. Walk in Jerusalem just like just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem. Great. Great, great, great day, day, the righteous marching. Great, great day, walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to walk in Jerusalem just like John. In Jerusalem just like John. In Jerusalem, in Jerusalem just like John. I want to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Just like John. Just like John.